South Florida, once again, we are immersed locally in the most significant national and international news of the week. And in the next half hour, we will hear from those immersed in it. Those immersed in getting aid to Israel, ramping up the operation to root out terrorists, those orchestrating relief for civilians in Gaza, those deciding the political moves that chart the history we are now all experiencing together all from South Florida. And we begin with Congressman Mario diaz Balart, Republican from Miami, here with us today live. Good morning, Congressman. Good to see you, Glenn. Thank you. Good to see you, too. And I'm, uh, I'm really glad that you're here today because you are the chair for the appropriations portion of the State Department and the foreign governmental spending. And what a week for you. Also about the speaker and the search for, so we'll get to all of that in the next couple of minutes, but I really do want to start with the, this week, the president proposed spending, uh, a big package of spending for Ukraine and for Israel and for humanitarian uh, assets and also for the southern border. So I wanted to, for your constituents today, get your take on whether you support that or not. Well, I'm still reviewing the details. I'll tell you it's a bit of a sticker shock. It's over $100 billion. I will tell you that we have to make sure that Israel has everything, and I mean that, everything that it needs uh, to take care of the situation that it is now facing. It is going to have to deal with these terrorists in a very aggressive way, and I support Israel um, doing what it needs to do. By the way, and it might get ugly. It will get ugly. War is ugly, particularly when you're dealing with terrorists. But I support Israel doing what it needs to do. And so uh, the portion for Israel, uh, uh, I'm looking through it. It looks uh, to be what Israel is actually asking for. We are in touch with the Israeli go uh, government almost on a, on a constant basis. Uh, I support defeating Putin. Uh, the, the problem uh, that we're having uh, with this proposal, it is not very clear. A big chunk of the money, by the way, that it says it is for, um, for Ukraine is not for Ukraine. It's actually for us, the United States, to, to, uh, to make up the gap for armaments that have been already sent abroad. Uh, we need to do that. Uh, on the border, you also mentioned, um, border is not just money, it's policy. Uh, I will tell you, Glenna, that if anybody thought that uh, we were gonna be able to have this disastrous border situation without consequences. Um, I think we're sitting on a ticking time bomb because of the grotesque irresponsibility of this administration uh, to protect the, the southern border and to actually give to the, the, the control of the southern border to the narco cartels. So uh, we're looking through it. We need to make sure that we provide Israel everything, everything it needs. And this is gonna be a long drawn out uh, painful process. It might take days, weeks, or months. However long it takes, I will be supporting Israel's right to defend itself. You know, uh, as you say that, and you have so much support, Israel has so much support, the civilians on both sides of that border have so much support. So I wonder, as we sit and watch not only the humanitarian aid start to arrive uh, in, in what is a significant but a trickle to the Gaza border for them, what do you tell your constituents about how far you would like to see the U.S. military involved as our warships are in place as we speak, and also how you find that balance between Israel rooting out terrorists once and for all and protecting its civilians and the civilians in Gaza who are paying the price for that operation? Yeah, on, on, we have to make sure that, uh, again, no other country tries to use this opportunity to, uh, again, further go after Israel. Uh, and I think that is very, very important that the world understands that we stand with Israel. That's point number two. On the issue of the civilians, number one is I am going to listen to what the Israelis think needs to be done. On the issue of, of aid to, uh, to Gaza, I am going to listen to the Israelis as to what they think needs to be done and how it should be done. They are there. They're the ones who are dealing with this. You know, I'm reminded, uh, um, and I don't know if it's a good comparison, and I don't exactly remember all the numbers, but there are about 20,000 uh, buried dead German Nazi soldiers, German soldiers uh, in uh, the area when the United States and its allies started liberating France. But, but there were also about 20,000 French civilians, and I'm talking about the Normandy area, that were killed by the, the, the Allies in the bombing raids in order to liberate 
uh, that part of France alone. Why do I say that? Because it's ugly. War is horrible. This was brought on by Hamas, by the terrorists. And now Israel has to do whatever it deems necessary to protect its citizens, to protect itself. This is an existential threat to Israel. And that's why I, I will repeat it time and time again, even when we start seeing things that we're not going to like. I will stand with Israel. Israel needs to do what it needs to do. And I will stand with Israel to the end. So many comparisons we've been hearing about current state of affairs and World War II over and over. Congressman, as you know, as we know, nothing gets done until that speaker is seated and um, the people in the process are riveted all week to watching the vote go down. Once again, Florida in the middle of everything, you and your colleague Carlos Jimenez, Republican from Miami, you were kind of half of the holdouts that started the domino effect of Jim Jordan not getting the votes. Uh, you were behind Steve Scalise for a couple of votes, and now late Friday night, it looks like you're now supporting Florida Congressman Byron Donalds for speaker. What do you expect to happen this week? Can anybody get to 217 and without that, no aid, no support, no policy gets done? Yeah, we have to get this done. Remember, we are in this situation because eight small group, eight Republicans, uh, who actually then coalesced uh, and coordinated with, with the radical left in the House, the squad. And eventually they got all the Democrats to join them to, in essence, depose the Republican uh, speaker, which has frankly never been done before. Now, I will tell you what well, happened. Now, wait a second. That, that's who, what Democrat would vote for a Republican speaker? What Republican would vote for a Democrat speaker? That's kind of No, I know. But what I'm telling you, the reason we are here is because this small group of eight Republicans again, uh, got together with the Democrats to do this. That's why we are in the situation that we are at. Uh, and I think that's, uh, as you know, that's a factual statement. Now, we had, an, we had an election, and that election against two individuals, uh, Mr. Jordan and Mr. Scalise, Mr. Scalise won. And then immediately, uh, they started trying to undermine the election that Mr. Scalise had actually won. Uh, and he did the honorable thing because of, of the pressure tactics started to try to undermine who actually won the election. He did the honorable thing, uh, in, and he decided to allow the process to move forward. But I will tell you, in my situation, I will never yield to pressure or to attempts to intimidate me. Now, conversations, all of that is great, and you know, and tough conversations. But as soon as this starts of trying to intimidate or trying to, you know, kind of scare people to vote one way or another, uh, that's where I will never even, I won't contemplate that. I mean, you know, those tactics of trying to intimidate has the opposite effect of me. I will not be intimidated. Now, were you, were you one we, of the people, were you one of the people, one of the congressmen or women who received death threats from those people uh, who wanted you to vote for Jim Jordan? Were you one of those? Did you get uh, those threats? Without getting into, without getting into details, it was, it, it got pretty ugly uh, and that's unfortunate. And that is not something that, that we can tolerate. I will never tolerate that. I have very tough conversations with anybody and I will speak and negotiate with anybody. But the, the, the moment that you try to start intimidating me, sorry, that's just never gonna work. If you want somebody, if, if, the, if my constituents and the voters want somebody that can be intimidated, well, they got the wrong person. And I think they all know that. And so now we have to elect a speaker. I think we have a really good group of uh, folks who are running. I think any one of them, by the way, could get 217 votes on the floor, assuming that this very small group of eight that are the ones that brought us to this situation in the first place uh, decide to become part of the team again. Well, we will all be watching Riveted on all of those levels. Um, always great to have you on board the program. Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart, have a beautiful Sunday. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks so much.